big signing alert. This is potentially one of the biggest signings in UFC history, and it's gone completely under the radar. They have signed the number one ranked welterweight kickboxer in the whole world. In his prime, 29-year-old Cedric Dumbe, who's from France, originally from Cameroon. And he's going to be making his debut on September 3rd for the first ever historic France card. He's going to be fighting in his home country, and that place is going to explode. And here's a fun fact about Cedric Dumbe. Not only is he the best welterweight kickboxer in the whole world, he doesn't even have a trainer. Yeah, he actually trained himself all the way to becoming the number one kickboxer in the world. And the reason for that is he said that he couldn't learn anything from any trainer. He would try trainers out, but that eventually he would just know more than them and they weren't teaching him or helping him with anything. Now, if you were ever to hear that, it would be someone like bragging or being full of themselves, but the guy has results. Ranked number one in the world, beat some of the best kickboxers on the planet. That means he's for real, man, and he's a very humble guy. If you ever look at any of his interviews, he seems honest, he seems very humble. And what that tells me is his fight IQ must be honest of this world. In MMA, hopefully he does get real trainers. He's going to need them for sure because he doesn't know the other aspects of fighting. His progression might be lightning quick. He might be able to grasp onto things much quicker than we anticipate. And when he makes his UFC debut, if he puts his wrestling together, he might be looking like the welterweight version of Francis Ngannou with the way he's going to be folding a lot of these guys, man. He has tremendous power in his hands, but when you watch like highlights of him and stuff, you cannot overlook how technical he is. The guy beat Nikki Holskin twice in a row and snapped his 11 win streak. And a fun fact, he fought Brad Riddell six years ago. Yeah, he fought Brad Riddell in kickboxing over there in China and won a split decision, which makes me think, could he potentially potentially even drop down to the lightweight division because honestly looking at it when he goes into the UFC he's going to be one of the top strikers in the organization 100% people already ask me is he better than Polaton no I don't think so I think Alex Pereira pound for pound is a better striker potentially just overall better fighter than Cedric Dumbe but Dumbe is a bit younger and he has a lot more growth so the promising thing about Dumbe is even if he loses a couple times in the UFC he has more time to get better Whereas for Alex Pereira, he probably doesn't have that much time in the sport, being 35 years old. And the way that Dumbe will lose would be most likely through the wrestling. The issue with it is he's in the welterweight division. The welterweight division in the UFC has the strongest wrestlers in their entire roster. It's the worst one you want to go into if you're a pure striker because you're going to get taken down all over the place. Everybody could pretty much wrestle. It's the opposite of the 185 pound division where nobody can really wrestle. That's why you see all the strikers rising in that division very quickly. So we're probably not going to see Cedric Dumbe replicate what Alex Pereira did or even Israel Adesanya did because along the way, he's going to be fighting a ton of wrestlers, man. Take down defense. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, all forms of grappling need to be practiced over and over again, as well as adapting better to MMA. Now, he has two MMA fights, and they are pretty recent. His last fight was in July 9th of this year, and that tells you that he's sticking to the sport. He started it, and that's all he's focusing on. Whereas for Alex Pereira in the past, he was kind of bouncing between MMA and kickboxing. Wasn't really super focused at MMA, but Cedric Dumbe is. And he has two finishes so far, two wins, no losses. Hopefully he can continue this, but his opponent is Darian Weeks, who is absolutely going to try to take this guy down over and over again. He does not want to strike with Dumbe at all. Weeks is a very big, strong guy, physically imposing, has a lot of power in his hands. In the world of MMA, maybe you can tag Dumbe out of nowhere using takedown feints and stuff to lower the guard a bit so he can attack over the top with his hands. That old school tactic is probably going to work on Cedric Dumbe, but I want to see if he surprises us because in his first two MMA fights... Both guys were trying to take this guy to the ground, and they could not. And actually, for his first MMA fight, I am pretty impressed on how he defended that takedown. His opponent actually tried something pretty tricky. He went up with a jab up top, then a low shot, and he actually got pretty deep on Dumbe. But Dumbe was eventually able to get the left underhook, drive the hips forward, and pick up his opponent from his hips. That combined with his change of stance, he has very low hands in an MMA fight, which is a bit different than how he used to fight in kickboxing. Very methodical, patient low hands, expecting the takedown, but keeps a good range so he can see strikes and takedowns much easier. But everything else that he kind of throws is relatively the same. He disengages from takedowns with explosive strikes. Whenever he does get in somewhat close range, he unloads on the opponent at different kind of angles, and that's how he was able to get a knockout. But if we're going to be honest, those two guys probably don't stack up to even Darian Weeks when it comes to wrestling. Weeks has taken down even Brian Barbarina four times in their fight, and in every one of his UFC fights so far, he has attacked with a lot of takedowns. And that is ultimately what Cedric Dumbe is going to have to have the utmost respect for. Because when it comes to straight up striking, it'd be shocking if anybody in this division could beat him in exchanges. Because he's not only powerful, he's not only aggressive, 
He is super slick when it comes to in-pocket exchanges and even far-range exchanges. Puts together a ton of combinations, rips up shots to the body, which you don't really see from a lot of the MMA fighters today. He has lightning-quick leg kicks, punishing. I mean, he's dropped opponents in kickboxing from leg kicks, guys who have trained their legs consistently. A lot of the guys in MMA do not have as conditioned legs as the guys in kickboxing do. And he was able to drop some of those guys. He has sneaky high kicks. His left hook and right overhand seem to be his big knockout blows that he's really confident in. Left hooks in the pocket and overhands gets around the guard very well. I mean, his precision with that right hand is actually pretty insane. Guys will put up like a tight guard and he's able to find the openings even with big gloves. Now imagine with little gloves. These guys are not gonna be able to block any of his punches. And all he needs is one. One against any of these guys and the fight is potentially over. And that's something you can't say for a lot of welterweights. I mean, Kamar Usman has that kind of power. Hamza seems to have similar kind of power. Gilbert Burns has a lot of power. Vicente Luque, Jeff Neal, Li Jing Leong. But I would have to say that none of these guys can show the same kind of lethal striking that Cedric Dumbay does. With pure power, some guys can match him. But when it comes with everything else, like precision, with timing, with the speed behind that kind of force, nobody in this division can hit like Cedric Dumbay. And I wonder later in his career if he's going to be able to drop to the lightweight division because even in kickboxing, he seemed a bit smaller than all of his opponents. He did say on Joe Rogan's podcast that he walks around like 187 pounds, which is smaller than a lot of the welterweights, but it would be on the bigger side for 155. I think Michael Chandler weighs more than him, and I think Dustin Poirier weighs around the same, while him being one inch taller than those two. So it wouldn't be out of the world for him to try 155 in the future in case the bigger, stronger wrestlers are just too much for him at 170. I'm very curious if he ever tries to make that move, which tells you how much even scarier it is that he was able to knock those guys out that were bigger than he was. I mean, look at his fight with Nikki Holskin. Holskin's way bigger than him. Aleem Nabeev towered over him. Merthel Gronar was much bigger than him. And he laid all of these guys out besides Nikki Holskin. So I am super stoked that Cedric Dumbay is going to be in the UFC. I'm even more excited about that France card now. And hopefully he could put on some fun fights for us. If I'm going to be honest about his future, even though I'm a big fan of his, in the welterweight division, I don't see him going too far. I absolutely see him losing at least a few fights before he even gets into the top 10. I hope he's able to prove me wrong on that. And he shows something very special out there in the cage.